like I said, you're fairly well tapped in, man. You got your ear to the ground. So in terms of the news, obviously, there's a lot of uh, quarterback talk. What are you hearing from the Patriots in terms of where they may be leaning when it comes to that quarterback conversation? Really anything else you think our people may want to uh, chomp at the bit for? So w what I've heard is that they like the guys that would be there, right? If Drake May is there, that they like him, that they've been impressed by him, that he's interviewed very well. But they also like... Jaden Daniels, and they felt the same way, that Daniels sort of had the, the right feel for things and had the good answers, the answers that they wanted. And then J.J. McCarthy, you know, who I, I think the, the hard thing for the J.J. McCarthy people or the people that aren't on this is that he was coming up the board long before we started talking about it. The media is always a little bit behind on that. I remember talking to Michael Felger on the air right after I came back from the Senior Bowl and be like, he's going to go top 10. And he's like, J.J. McCarthy. I'm like, he wasn't even at the Senior Bowl, but he was part of the talk of the Senior Bowl and how people felt about him. So I think there's a lot of balls still up in the air. And I think one thing that I can tell you for sure about what's going on in the building, Taylor, is that not a lot of people, if any, know exactly what Elliot's thinking, that he's playing it close to the vest. And I think that sort of – you talked. I've talked to other GMs around the league and how they like to do certain things. And one of the things that I've sort of come away with is – the people that do like to play close to the vest, they feel like it actually encourages discussion amongst their guys because their guys don't know. Does Elliot really like this guy? Do I really want to tell Elliot I think this guy stinks? No, he's sort of taking himself out. He's got his own thoughts and opinions on how he wants to do this. But go ahead. When we sit at the table, you pound the table for this guy if you think that's the guy. Or you say, you, dude, if we take this guy at three, we're idiots. And he wants to hear all those opinions. And I think that's how the smart GMs, at least the ones I've talked to, I think that's the kind of the way they like to operate because they want to hear the dissenting voices and the positive voices. And maybe they get told something during the process and say, is that true? I got to go back. I got to pop the tape back on, mm -hmm. right? So I, I think that's sort of where they're at right now. So there is still some secrecy and some little mind games in Foxborough, but now it seems like it's pointing in the right direction where people actually want to share their opinions and have a platform to do so. You kicked off with, your, with J.J. McCarthy, so let's start there. Now, this is when we get a lot. Please explain how J.J. McCarthy isn't Mac Jones. Really? I mean, from my comment section, it seems like any white quarterback that's possibly going to the Patriots is Mac Jones right now, but obviously Drake May and J.J. McCarthy are two very different prospects, nothing like Mac Jones. But with J.J. specifically, what do you think he offers that can give Patriots fans some uh, some relief after what was, of course, the worst year of Mac Jones' career? Well, significantly better athlete and a better arm. Now, he doesn't have the A-plus arm, but it's a B-plus. Mm -hmm. And I think if you talk to people, if you want to put a letter grade on Mac – C, C minus. And, and then you're talking about weather, you know, at least the one thing with JJ McCarthy too, one of the many things about JJ McCarthy would be you've seen him play in bad weather. It's, it's not often very nice in Ann Arbor after about October 1st. So like you have sort of some evidence, like can he handle the wind? Can he handle the rain? Can he handle those elements, which, you know, let's face it, Mac Jones didn't have a ton of starts in college and didn't have to play in a lot of that stuff. Um, and I think the other thing too, that you can sort of, hey, he's not Mac Jones. He wasn't surrounded by, like his offensive line is phenomenal. The six guys got invited to the combine. So like there's going to be a lot of Michigan guys in the league from the offensive line standpoint. But you look at receiver, it's Roman Wilson, right? He's going to be drafted in the first two rounds. Uh, Johnson, the big kid, he's probably going to get drafted on day three. He's sort of never quite become the player that he was billed as coming out of high school. Um, but otherwise, you know, like, Blake Corum, right? Like they, they're a run heavy team. Like, I don't think he was surrounded by a ton of talent. Whereas as we know, someone like Mac Jones was throwing two first round draft picks everywhere and, and breaking all kinds of records. So right away, I think you could just discount that notion. I think the other thing that, that when I talk about what kind of athlete he is, it's not just about sort of, oh, he's not, he's not running as fast as Jaden Daniels. No, he's not going to put that, that time up. Right. But he is a good enough athlete that he can run away from pressure, that he can run for first downs. I, I hate to use it because someone will glom onto this and then say I'm comparing him to, but like sort of like a Pat Mahomes, right? Where Mahomes, he doesn't, he's not running all the time. He doesn't want to run, but if he has to, he does it and he does it effectively. McCarthy is that same kind of guy, maybe even a little bit better of uh, foot speed that, than Mahomes has. So like, those are the sorts of things I look at and say, that's very cool. That, that, that makes him very unlike Mac Jones. I say another thing that the word keeps coming up is loose. 
he's a loose athlete. The hips, like he, you know, the way he rotates his body and when he when he's on the move and makes some throws, like that's the kind of thing that you want from a quarterback that might be moved from the pocket. Um, and look, there's plenty of things that he has to improve on. He didn't have to um, carry them on a down by down basis, like Drake May had to do, like to a certain extent, Jaden had to do, and certainly Caleb Williams had to do at USC with the with the team he had around him as well. So that's a little bit different. But I think when people look at him, saying he's 21 years old, you know, he's the youngest quarterback of the ones that are going to get drafted. At, we think in the first round, a little bit younger than Drake May, like. There's things to work with here. Like it's he's not going to come in and be perfect right away, but you feel like with some more coaching and a little bit more experience that he can hit maybe a higher ceiling than some people are projecting. And with that age, I mean, you have to think about the fact that this is a guy who's probably still going to get bigger. And obviously the lack of like tape on him and the lack of in-game exposure, especially in some big moments. Yeah, it's a bit concerning, but also he has fewer bad habits. You could a guy like Drake May where 2022, it's like, yeah, this guy's going to be a stud. Lock it in. Now, last season, because he wasn't surrounded by as much NFL talent, he had the coaching change where a lot of things going on around him, you did see those bad habits start to creep into his game. So, McCarthy, you can look at both sides of the coin where it's like, yeah, we don't really know what we're getting. But a lot of the times in scouting, you're looking for tools. Sometimes it's just like if they don't have bad habits, we can mold this guy and make him whatever we want in our image. And like you said, J.J. McCarthy's got that. The arm, yeah, it's you know he doesn't have a, a cannon like a Drake May or like a Caleb Williams or Michael Penix Jr., but it's more than good enough he can create. You talk about the footwork as well, because I know in your mock you mentioned it, where he the feet, the footwork is a lot better than what you typically get with Drake May, where he has a more consistent base. It is a bit wide for what I like, mm -hmm. but, I mean, if I make the argument all the time that the footwork and those kinds of things, especially with Alex Van Pelt, who has a history of working with quarterbacks throughout the season to fix those things, that's not as much of a problem. So do I think there are times where J.J. will sometimes throw in us some windows where I'm like, I don't – you got away with it. I don't know if you want to do that yeah. again. That's part of learning experience. But if you're talking about drafting a guy at number three overall, I said it this weekend, I'd rather take a McCarthy where he's got room to grow. He's got arm strength. He's got, he's got the size, things that you like versus a Jaden where I feel like as talented as he is, it's really more of a floor with him because he got the speed, but the arm strength is lacking. The size, like 15th percentile weight, which just yeah. kind of has to scare you. And that daredevil mentality where he's probably going to get himself into trouble. So I agree. If we're talking about maybe not at number three necessarily, but if Patriots are going to entertain, maybe we trade back, get back into the top five after we get more picks. I really like the idea of J.J. McCarthy again because you have a lot to work with. Yeah, yeah, no, and I was just going to say, like, with the McCarthy thing, like, you, you mentioned some of the things, like, he throws, a lot of times he throws with one velocity, right? Like, he's got to learn to change speeds a little bit better, but again, I think that's more about experience and sort of figuring out what you can do, what you can't do, and look, there were times where they did have the handcuffs on him, but there are also times when you go deeper into the film, and, and I know you've been deep in the film, like, where... Hey, it's a big play, and he delivers. Like he makes a, he made a couple plays in the playoff run where you're like, God damn, sign you know, sign me up for that. Because and, and that just shows you like that there is that capability in there. And I, I wanted to touch on Alex Van Pelt a little bit because mm -hmm. one of the things that I sort of picked up, you know, like you do your scouting, right? <laughs> Guys get hired, and then you start having more conversations with other people around the league who've crossed paths with him or coached with him. Um, and you know, one of the things I made a you know, in a, a recent podcast I did that I, I felt like it didn't get enough attention or like it hadn't got enough attention prior to Kevin Stefanski didn't wasn't responsible for Alex Van Pelt not being on the staff. That came from up above because Deshaun Watson hasn't lived up to the guaranteed contract and the oodles of money that they paid out to him. And this is one of those situations where maybe the number cruncher guys up there um aren't seeing the full picture because the full picture is there are a lot of people in Cleveland that are very unhappy. Alex Van Pelt is not on their coaching staff anymore. Did a phenomenal job last year, five quarterbacks. They had to get five quarterbacks ready and they were a playoff team. Uh, and that, you know, look, Kevin's calling the plays, but Alex had so much to do with getting everybody ready for those Sundays and then being the extra set of ears and eyes for, for Kevin Stefanski. And then the other thing I'll tell you about it is, and, you know, we've seen Alex has been out there on these sort of scouting trips and seeing these guys. Somebody who worked with him said, like, if Alex tells you that that's the guy, I'd believe him. So we have all these questions about Alex as a play caller, right? Because we just don't know. He, he, he hasn't done it he, since 2009, you know, a game here, a game there. But otherwise, like, he hasn't had to call a full season of plays in eons. But from a from a developmental standpoint, from a, an eye for talent, 
there's confidence or I've gained confidence in what I've been told from other people about Alex and his influence on the process. And again, it's Elliot's decision. And Elliot's going to listen to a lot of people. But at the end of the day, Elliot has to say, this is the guy I feel strongly about. But I like knowing that between McAdoo and we know about Ben and, you know, that the 2018 draft and how we felt about Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. And now this. All right. I feel like they've got some eyes on that position that they either ignored prior to with Bill Belichick, you know, running the whole show or, you know, they just they weren't seeing it. Yeah, I mean, Alex Van Pelt's not going to, like, walk out of a fashion magazine like some of the other people that right. everybody wanted hired in the coaching staff. I'll be honest. When the news broke, I was doing a live show and literally had to go on Wikipedia. I was like, who is this guy? I'm yeah. not really familiar. The more you learn about him, it's like, no, this is a guy where obviously there are things that, you know, he's inexperienced in the offensive coordinator and play calling capacity. But when it comes to quarterbacks, you go back and look at his comments from before. He's a distant disciple of the uh, Bill Walsh coaching tree, which mm -hmm. is really exciting. That's where a lot of that footwork and um, a lot of his offensive principles come from. So I agree. If, if Ben McAdoo says this is our guy with his experience playing the position, coaching the position, learning about the position, I think with the help of Ben McAdoo, I'm excited whoever they decide is going to be their guy. Testing my skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. Use the code CLNS for the first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy.